Hello and welcome. In many mathematical procedures involving interpolation, differential equations, and recursive equations, the solutions reduce to a set of simultaneous linear equations. This video presentation is about practical and interesting examples, where one can benefit from the system of linear equations as discussed in the previous presentation. As a motivation to learn this important topic, we will be showing examples from signal processing, communication systems, control systems and artificial neural networks. The objectives are to, study less but, smart. Hopefully, after watching these motivational examples, you would be happy with the concept to set up simultaneous linear equations in matrix form and vice versa to find a solution. The purpose of the channel is education for all especially in this tough time of pandemic COVID-19. The course pathways include subjects of communication systems, signal processing, control systems, AI, and IT. If these courses are of interest to you, please subscribe and share with your colleagues, friends and class fellows. A system of linear equations is a finite set of linear equations. Generally, a linear system with m, equations, and n, variables can be written as in the top left. An example of system of linear equations with three variables or three unknowns is as shown on the left bottom which can be transformed to a coefficient matrix, multiplied with column vector x which contains the variables or unknowns, to result in the constant column vector. B. The solution, of the system represented by, A, X equals B, that is, is to find the unknown variables, or the column vector X, which is obtained by taking the inverse of the coefficients matrix A, and then multiplying with the column vector, B. The inverse can be found in many ways, one way is to find the adjoint matrix of A, and divide its each element by the determinant of A. Note that, the solution only exists if the determinant of the coefficient matrix is non-zero, which is non-singular case, or otherwise, pseudo inverse can be used. Here we present an example of practical importance. The upward velocity of a rocket is given at three different times on the following table which shows the velocity versus time data for the rocket. The velocity, data is approximated by a polynomial as v of t equals a, t square plus b, t, plus c for a time period of 7 seconds between 5 and 12 seconds. We have to set up the equations in matrix form to find the coefficients a, b, c, of the velocity profile for data fitting. Requiring that, v of t equals a, t square plus b, t plus C passes through the three data points V1, at T1, V2 at, T2 and V3 at T, 3, we have V of T1 equals A, T1 square, plus B, T1, plus C and similarly for the other two data points as shown. Substituting the three data points values from the table gives, the three equations on the left and simplifying gives the three equations on the right. Note that. The three equations can also be written as the sum of vector products. In the matrix form, this set of equations can be rewritten as. And further using matrix multiplication gives, where the 3 by 3 matrix A is multiplied with the three variables constituting the column matrix X, with the unknown entries A, B and C. The result is the velocities vector B with entries 106.8. 177.2, and 279.2. By finding the inverse of matrix A and then multiplying with the column vector B, to find the column vector of unknowns. Now we have, A equals 0.2905, B equals 19.69 and C equals 1.086. After knowing the unknowns, we can simply use a polynomial which is numerically easy to implement, and computationally very efficient, requiring no matrix inverse and multiplication operations. Here, important examples form signal processing represented in matrix form are shown. A general linear equation can be described by a difference equation as shown. In general, 
the output y at time n, of the system is a function of the scaled inputs and previous outputs. The input including the present input x, n, and, p, previous inputs, that is, xn minus 1, xn minus 2, up to, x, n minus p. These inputs are scaled by a, 1, a, 2, and so on, up to a, n. The previous q outputs, y, n minus 1, y, n minus 2, and so on, up to y, n minus q are scaled by the parameters, b1, b2, and so on, up to b, n minus q. This can be written in sum of product and as sum of dot product form as shown. This is a general case of autoregressive moving average model case, utilizing the weight vectors A, and B. In signal processing, the whites are generally represented by a vector denoted as boldface letter W, when only inputs are considered, which is the case of finite impulse response filters, otherwise infinite filters if previous outputs are also considered in which case the weight vector, B is also required. The Wiener-Hoff equations are popular for optimum filtering and provide a benchmark for comparison, however, computationally complex due to computation of autocorrelation coefficients Rx, 0, Rx, 1, and so on, of the input vector X and the inverse required of high order correlation matrix. This filter gives a relation between the autocorrelation matrix R, multiplied with the weight vector, W. To result the cross correlation vector, P between the input X, and the desired output. A prediction example is given on the top right, where one can see the correlation coefficients on the right side, that is, it helps estimate the future coefficient, R, X P, while in previous case it is R, X, P minus 1. This is the same form as the Yule Walker equations, which is shown for a third order system. Finally, we can see equations for paid approximation in the matrix form which is used for signal modeling. The setup is shown for a general autoregressive moving average processes. Now consider a MIMO communication system. A channel model is needed to properly assess a MIMO channel. In MIMO, the system configuration typically contains M antennas at the transmitter and N antennas at the receiver front end as illustrated in the figure. Here, each receiver antenna receives not only the direct signal intended for it, but also receives a fraction of signal from other propagation paths. Thus, the channel response is expressed as a transmission matrix H. The direct path formed between antenna 1 at the transmitter and antenna 1 at the receiver is represented by the channel response. The channel response of the path formed between antenna 1 in the transmitter and antenna 2 in the receiver is expressed as H12 and so on. Thus, the channel matrix is of dimension n by m. The received vector y is expressed in terms of the channel transmission matrix H, the input vector x and noise vector n as, note that the response of the MIMO link is expressed as a set of linear equations. For example of 2 by 2 MIMO system configuration, the received signal vector is expressed as the receiver has to solve this set of equations to find out what was transmitted, that is, x. The neural network mimics the neurons association, which is the most important mechanism of the brain, using the weight value. Look at a simple example for a better understanding of the artificial neural network's mechanism. Consider a node that receives three inputs, as shown in figure on left. X1, X2, and X3 are the input signals. W1, W2, and W3 are the weights for the corresponding signals. B is the bias. The weighted sum of the input signals is calculated. Where W and X are defined as a variety of neural networks can be created depending on how the nodes are connected. One of the most commonly used neural network types employs a layered structure of nodes as shown in figure 2. The layers in between the input and output layers are called hidden layers. In the layered neural network, the signal enters the input layer, passes through the hidden layers, and leads through the output layer. During this process, 
the signal advances layer by layer. Consider the neural network with a single hidden layer shown in figure 3. First layer output is as shown, which is input to the second layer, and its output is the final output of the neural network. The matrix is constructed from the weights of the first node of the hidden layer lay in the first row, and the weights of the second node are in the second row. Generally, an abbreviated form or notation is shown. Here, control systems applications are considered. The expanded form of state space representation for control systems is shown, where the first derivatives of the state's vector, that is, x1 dot x2 dot up to xn dot on the left is equated to the state vector x1, x2, up to xn, through the system matrix A, the input scaling matrix B and the input or control vector U. The output vector Y with entries Y1, Y2, up to Yn are related to the state vector through a matrix C. Examples are shown for automotive active suspension system and an RLC circuit where the differential equations are simplified to the required form of matrix algebra. It should be noted that, all matrices can be time variant, that is their elements can depend on time, however, in the common LTI case, matrices will be time invariant. There are many other numerous examples which can be transformed into such simplified forms of set of linear equations and an analysis can be performed. Hopefully, you have enjoyed the presentation, and has contributed to or refreshed your knowledge, the objectives are to study less but smart, stay safe. Please like, subscribe and share.